Welcome to a quick Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on adding page numbers to your documents in Apple Pages. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. On any of your created pages, hover your mouse over the top or bottom of the page and these three boxes will appear. Select the box which you want the page number to be in and then select Insert Page Number. Choose which style of page numbering you want. This will add page numbers to every page of your document and it will also be on any new page you create. You can highlight one of them and edit the styling and formatting of the page numbers. Editing one of them will take effect on all of them. You can remove the page numbering by highlighting one of them and then deleting it. It will delete the numbering on every page. And that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more tips and tricks. Welcome to a quick Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on changing the background colour and image of your document in Apple Pages. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. To do this, start by clicking the file menu at the top left of the screen. Then select Convert to Page Layout. Converting to page layout will remove any text you've already written, so if you need to keep your text, go back, select it all and copy it. We'll be able to paste it back in after. Go back to file and then select convert to page layout. On the right of page layout it has background options. Select which type of background fill you want. You can select Image Fill and upload your own images from your Mac here. Once you have changed the background colour, you can click File again. This time select Convert to Word Processing. You'll now be back in the normal word processing editor and you can paste your text from before back in if you had any. And that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more tips and tricks. Welcome to a quick Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on seeing the word count of your document in Apple Pages. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. Inside the document editor, click the view button from the top left sidebar of Pages. In the view menu, click show word count. This will create a box that displays your word count. You can drag it to any position you want to and it will stay in that position even when you scroll. 
click on the up down arrow Welcome to the right to of the word edit tutorial and you can choose to make measures of the apple watch such as character if you find this tutorial and page please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video to delete the word count on your watch click the digital crown to open the topic app menu and then select open the word messages app and that draws and shows your messages inbox which is like the video to your app found it helpful you can subscribe to the Foxy Tech Decisions for more in depth and tricks and tap on one to reply to that person. You can create messages in a few ways. You can speak into the microphone which will convert it to text. You can use swipe writing to write a text and you can also select from pre-written replies to quickly respond to someone. Write your message using the microphone or swipe right feature and then tap send. You can tap new message to start a new conversation with someone. Tap add contact and then add someone from your contacts list or add a number with the dial pad. And that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more Apple Watch tips and tricks. Welcome to a Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on permanently deleting photos and videos on your Samsung device. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. When you delete photos and videos from your phone's gallery, they are not fully deleted, but are moved to a trash folder. They will be kept there for 30 days and will then be permanently deleted. If you want to permanently delete them immediately and not wait 30 days, here's what to do. Open up the Gallery app on your phone and tap on the three lines button in the bottom right. Tap on Recycle Bin from the menu that appears. Here are all of the photos and videos that you've deleted in the last 30 days. At the bottom of each image it says how many days it has left before it will be permanently deleted. Tap on the image you want to permanently delete and then tap on the trash icon in the bottom right corner of the image. Tap delete on the pop-up. That image will now be permanently deleted. You can also choose multiple photos and videos to permanently delete by tapping edit at the top selecting several photos or videos and then tapping the trash icon in the bottom right.
You can also permanently delete everything in your recycle bin at once by tapping empty in the top right and then tapping empty recycle bin on the pop-up. If you don't want your photos and videos to be moved to the recycle bin when you delete them, but instead want them to be immediately deleted, you can disable the recycle bin altogether. This is a risky thing to do though because if at some point you delete a photo or video by mistake, there will be no way to get it back. If you are sure you want to disable your recycle bin, open your gallery and tap on the three lines button in the bottom right corner and then tap on settings from the menu that appears. In settings, switch the toggle off to the right of recycle bin and then tap turn off on the pop-up. Note that any photos or videos that are currently in your recycle bin will be deleted when you disable it. Now when you delete photos or videos they will immediately be permanently deleted. And that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more Samsung tips and tricks. Welcome to Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on changing your date of birth on Facebook. I'll show you how to do it on the app, but doing it on desktop is pretty much the same thing. Let's begin. Open up Facebook and then head over to your profile page. From your profile, tap on See your About Info. Here on the About Settings page, scroll down to Basic Info and you will see your date of birth. Tap on the Edit button beside it. On this page you can now change your date of birth. Note that you are only allowed to change your date of birth a couple of times in total before you won't be allowed to anymore. Once you've changed the date, tap on the I confirm I am this age checkbox and then scroll down to the bottom of the page and tap on save. Your date of birth will now be updated on your Facebook profile. And that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more Facebook tips and tricks. Welcome to Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on creating a new Facebook account on mobile. If you don't already have the Facebook app, install that first and then open it up. On the first page of the Facebook app, tap on Create New Facebook Account down at the bottom and then tap Next. Now type in your first and last name and tap on Next once you're done. Next you need to enter your date of birth and then continue. Enter your gender. If you prefer not to reveal your gender, you can tap on Custom. You can now enter your mobile number. Or, if you would prefer to sign up with email instead, which is what I'm doing, tap on Sign up with email. Then, you need to enter your email and tap on Next. You now need to enter the password you wish to use for your Facebook account. 
try to create a strong one by utilising capital letters and symbols. If you want Facebook to use your firm's address book to find contacts for you, then tap on Sign Up. Or if you don't want to give Facebook that permission, then tap on Sign Up without uploading my contacts. Your account will now be created. If you'd like, you can save your password so that you don't need to enter it every time. Depending on what you use to sign up with, you will now need to confirm your email or phone number. They will then send you a code that you will need to enter here. You can now add a profile picture if you'd like. On the next page you will get the option to upload your phone contacts again to make finding friends easier. Your Facebook account is now set up and ready for use. If you tap on your profile picture at the top left here, you will be taken to your profile page where you can add more info if you wish. And that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more Facebook tips and tricks. Welcome to a Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on connecting an Xbox controller to an Android Smart TV. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. You can use the Xbox controller to play games installed on the Android TV, as well as use it to navigate the menus of the TV. Start by turning your Xbox controller on and then turn on syncing mode by holding the sync button until it starts flashing. Next, hit the home button on your TV remote. From the home screen of your TV, go to the top right and click on settings. In settings, scroll down to the network and accessories heading and then select Bluetooth settings. In Bluetooth settings, click Add Device. It will now search for the controller. Select it to pair it to your TV. You can now use the Xbox controller to control the TV and also play games downloaded from the App Store with it. And that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more Android TV tips and tricks. Welcome to a Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on adding new clock faces to your Apple Watch. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. There are a few ways of adding new clock faces to your Apple Watch, but the easiest I think is by using the Watch app on your iPhone. Open up the Watch app and then select Face Gallery from the bottom tabs. The face gallery shows a list of all the clock faces provided by Apple. Tap on one you like and you will be able to add it right away. 
or you can customize it. On most faces, you can choose between multiple styles and complications. Complications are like little widgets that display extra information on the clock face. When you're finished customizing, tap Add at the top right of the page to add it to your watch. You can have multiple faces saved to your watch and switch between them whenever you want. On the main page of the watch app you can see the faces currently installed on your watch. On your watch you can switch between the different faces installed by swiping from either side. Back on the watch app on iPhone by selecting an installed watch face. You can also set it as your current face or delete it from the watch. You can install new faces without using the iPhone at all. Hold down your finger on your current watch face to get into the face options. Scroll all the way to the right and tap on the plus button. You can now choose any of the faces available on the watch gallery like before. Select any face and it will automatically set as your current face. If you then want to edit the face, hold your finger down on it again and then select edit. You can also delete faces from this edit menu by swiping up on the watch face you want to remove. And that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more Apple Watch tips and tricks. Welcome to a Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on quitting apps running in the background on iPad. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. When you swipe up to go to your homepage on iPad, it doesn't fully quit the app you are using. It will stay partially running in the background and allow you to continue where you left off when you last used it. To fully quit apps, do a swipe up and hold until the open apps menu shows. You can then swipe your open apps up in order to quit them. You can repeat this for all the apps open in the background. Note that closing all your apps like this doesn't actually offer any improvements in battery life or speed of your iPad. And that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more iPad tips and tricks. Welcome to a Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on changing the wallpaper on your Samsung Galaxy. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. If you want to make a photo that you took your wallpaper, then open up the gallery app on your phone. 
In the gallery, open the photo that you would like to set as your wallpaper. Tap on the three dots button in the bottom right corner. Then choose Set as Wallpaper. You now have a few different options. You can set the photo as your home screen, your lock screen, your home screen and lock screens, your always on display or your call background. I will set it as my home screen and lock screen. You can see a preview here. Tap set on lock and home screens. If you would like to set your wallpaper as something other than a photo that you have taken, then hold down on an empty space on your home screen until this menu appears. Tap wallpapers in the bottom left corner. Tap on my wallpapers and you can choose from lots of preloaded default wallpapers. Tap one to select it and then choose whether you would like to set it as your home screen wallpaper, lock screen wallpaper or both. You can see a preview now. Tap set if you would like to use that wallpaper. If not, then tap the back button. If you go back to the main wallpapers page, you can tap gallery to choose photos from your gallery to set as your wallpaper. Tap on a photo to select it, and then tap done in the top right. You can also choose videos from your gallery to set as your lock screen, but not as your home screen. Just tap on the video to select it and then tap done in the top right. 15 seconds of the video will play on your lock screen. Tap set on lock screen. You can also set multiple photos from your gallery on your lock screen by tapping them to select them and then tapping done. Tap on Wallpaper Services to see more wallpaper options. Here you can choose a dynamic wallpaper for your lock screen. This means that your lock screen wallpaper will change every time you pick up your phone. Tap on the settings cog to the right of dynamic lock screen. Download up to 5 categories that you would like to be shown on your dynamic lock screen. Tap on a category to download it. You can choose when new images download every two weeks, whether they can download just on Wi-Fi or also on data. Tap download. Back on the wallpaper services page, you can set your wallpaper to Samsung Global Goals. With this lock screen, you'll be given the option to donate to a different course each time you unlock your phone, as well as watching ads to earn money for charities. If you don't want either of these wallpapers, select None and then tap Apply at the bottom. Back on the main wallpapers page, you can tap on Explore More Wallpapers at the bottom of the options. Here you can look through a lot of paid wallpapers, but if you swipe all the way to the right on the Editor's Choice Wallpapers, you can get to All Wallpapers, where you can find plenty of free wallpapers to download. Tap a wallpaper you like to open it and then tap download. When it's downloaded you have the option to apply the wallpaper from here. If you go back to the main wallpapers page and tap on my wallpapers, then downloads. You can see all of the wallpapers you have downloaded and set them as your wallpaper.
and that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more Samsung tips and tricks. Welcome to a Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on creating columns in Apple Pages. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. I'll show you how to do it both on the word processor and page layout areas of Pages. In the default text editor of Pages, you can create columns by selecting the Layout tab. In the Layout tab, you'll see the Columns options. Expand them. You can add multiple columns here. Either enter a number or use the up and down buttons to create more or delete columns. Double click any of the created columns and you can edit the column width and gutter width. The gutter is the space between each column. If equal column width is enabled, then changing one column will change the rest of them. Disable that checkbox and you can make each column be a different size. On the page layout section of pages, you can create columns by first selecting a text box and dragging it to the size you want. When the text box is selected, go to the Layout tab and expand the Columns options. Here you can create and edit columns like before. Another way of creating columns with page layout is to create multiple text boxes. They can be any size and start in different places. You can then connect them by clicking this circle icon at the top of the first text box and then clicking the same circle button at the top of the second box. This will connect the two of them and create columns. You can do this with as many text boxes as you want. And that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more tips and tricks. Welcome to a Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on repeating songs on Apple Music. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. Getting Apple Music to repeat the same song or playlist over and over is super easy to do. When you are playing the track you want to repeat, tap the repeat icon once to make it repeat the current playlist and tap it a second time to make it repeat the current song. You'll know it's set to repeat one song because the icon will have a 1 on it. Tap it a third time to reset it and not repeat anything. Tapping the repeat icon once repeats the playlist. Tapping it again repeats the song. And tapping it a third time turns off repeat. And that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more Apple Music tips and tricks.
Welcome to a Foxy Tech Tips tutorial on changing your name on Facebook. I'll be doing this on the mobile app, but you can easily follow along if you are on desktop too. Let's begin. On the Facebook app, tap on the menu button at the top right of the screen. The menu button is three horizontal lines. From here, tap on settings and privacy and then tap on settings. In the settings menu, you want to tap on personal information, the first option on the list, and then tap on name. Here on this page, you can now edit your Facebook name. Note that once you have changed your name, you won't be allowed to change it again for 60 days. Once you have changed it, tap on Review Change. You can now decide how your name is displayed. Once you are happy with that, you will need to enter your Facebook password and then tap on Save Changes. Once you have done that, your official Facebook name will have changed. And that draws an end to this tutorial. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Foxy Tech Tips for more Facebook tips and tricks.